Good morning. My name is um, Professor Tom Harrison from the Institute of Infection and Immunity at St George's University of London and also the MRC Centre for Medical Mycology at the University of Exeter. And I'm happy to give you this update on the antifungal therapy for cryptococcal meningitis and cryptococcal infection on behalf of the uh, LIFE organization. So these were the learning outcomes from the talk. First of all, to be aware of the different phases of antifungal uh, therapy for cryptococcal meningitis. And then, of course, to be aware of the different antifungal regimens that we use in these different phase phases. And specifically, to be aware of data from two large uh, trials, the ACTA and the AMBITION uh, trials. The ACTA trial that was published in 2018, which showed the critical importance of flucytosine as a component of the most effective antifungal regimens in the induction phase of uh, treatment. And um, the ACTA trial also showed uh, that in the context of HIV-associated meningitis, when you're using the deoxycholate formulation of amphotericin B, the fact that uh, just one week of amphotericin B deoxycholate and flucytosine is as effective and safer than two weeks of amphotericin B deoxycholate and flucytosine. And then the, the second trial, the AMBITION trial, which shows the efficacy and the safety of a, a, a new regime based on a single high dose of ambisome, that's liposomal amphotericin B, 10 milligrams per kilogram given on day one, together with an optimized oral backbone of high dose fluconazole and flucytosine for 14 days. The efficacy and safety of that regimen such that this has now become the WHO preferred uh, regimen. Thirdly, to be aware of the very important issue of the optimal timing of initiation of antiretroviral therapy or reinitiation or any switch in antiretroviral therapy after uh, HIV related uh, cryptococcal meningitis. And lastly, of course, to be aware of the antifungal management of other forms of cryptococcal infection uh, and also of cryptococcal meningitis. Uh, uh, which is not associated with HIV, non-HIV associated cryptococcal meningitis. So just uh, to start off by putting uh, the, uh, the antifungal treatment in the context of, broader, uh, of the broader management of, of patients with cryptococcal meningitis. And suffice to say that patients with suspected cryptococcal meningitis or systemic cryptococcal infection need admission to hospital for thorough, thorough evaluation. They need that also for delivery of optimal antifungal treatment. And very importantly, if cryptococcal meningitis is confirmed, then um, they need lumbar puncture, not only for diagnosis, but also to measure uh, uh, cerebral spinal fluid pressure, intracranial pressure, and if that's raised, uh, to, to manage that raised pressure. As we know that raised uh, CSF pressure is an extremely common complication and potentially life-threatening complication of patients with cryptococcal meningitis. And then lastly, as we said, in, in the context of HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis, then um, patients need to be counseled about antiretroviral therapy and a plan made for optimal either starting of antiretroviral therapy or restarting or switching of antiretroviral therapy. So this, this shows you the scheme of the different phases of antifungal therapy for HIV-related cryptococcal meningitis. And this was based on a landmark mycosis study group trial uh, published over 20 years ago now in 1997 by Charlie van der Horst and colleagues, where the, 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 the strategy was to use an initial induction phase, two weeks of amphotericin B-based treatment to gain uh, control of the infection and to follow that with a consolidation phase for the next eight weeks with high dose fluconazole and then lastly um, a longer term maintenance uh, phase with low dose fluconazole just 200 milligrams a day for at least a year and until immune reconstitution occurs secondary to the antiretroviral uh, uh, therapy uh, uh, treatment. 
So again, just to, just to emphasize the, the other elements of management that go along with these phases in addition uh, simply to the antifungal drugs. And as we've already said, in the early induction phase, the critical important, importance of managing any raised uh, uh, intracranial pressure. And then importantly, also during induction, uh, monitoring and management uh, to, to minimize the toxicity of the drugs that we're using, in particular the toxicity of amphotericin associated with amphotericin B treatment. So there's good evidence that giving an extra liter of normal saline uh, to patients uh, a day on top of their normal fluid requirements uh, reduces the nephrotoxicity associated with amphotericin B uh, uh, treatment. Uh, we need to give uh, electrolyte replacement, potassium and magnesium during amphotericin B treatment because of the electrolyte wasting associated with amphotericin B. We need to monitor the hemoglobin because of the anemia and the creatinine because of the renal impairment. In the, in the context of flucytosine treatment, we do keep an eye on the full blood count, but just to emphasize that neutropenia associated with flucytosine at the lower, historically lower doses that we now use that drug and for the short duration of two weeks is really uh, a relatively rare, a relatively rare uh, complication uh, and really in my experience only a significant issue in the context of renal impairment uh, when the flucytosine levels would be increased and of course it's vitally important to adjust the flucytosine dosing according to standard uh, algorithms if there's significant renal impairment. With amphotericin B, it's very important to keep an eye out for phlebitis and to flush the lines well and to replace any lines early to avoid uh, uh, secondary bacterial infections, which obviously could, can also be life-threatening. That's particularly important, obviously, with the amphotericin B deoxycholate. Remember, patients with cryptococcal meningitis are late-stage HIV patients, and they're susceptible to all the other complications of HIV infection, uh, notably tuberculosis and other, and other bacterial infections. So it's very important to be aware of this and to investigate and treat any other HIV-related complications. And lastly, later on in the course of treatment, uh, during late consolidation and maintenance, look out for any signs of cryptococcal immune reconstitution uh, reactions which, which might need uh, further management. So what about the antifungal uh, treatment? Well, the, the approach up until 2018 uh, was this one, based on the, the Van der Horst study that I mentioned, two weeks amphotericin B, deoxycholate and uh, flucytosine, and also based on this trial carried out by Jeremy Day and colleagues in Vietnam showing the survival benefit of this combination over amphotericin B alone. And you'll notice uh, in terms of efficacy in this trial, then the combination of amphotericin B and fluconazole appeared to be of intermediate uh, efficacy. But in 2018, the results of the ACTA trial were published. And um, uh, first, uh, first result from that trial I've just picked out is the fact that this trial confirmed that flucytosine was the best drug, the best partner drug to give with amphotericin B, as shown in this graph here of, of mortality with the flucytosine in red and fluconazole in blue. So a very significant survival advantage with flucytosine given as the partner drug with am 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 amphotericin B. So in fact, if you broke down the results of the ACTA trial into the five different treatments given, then by some way the best uh, treatment in the ACTA trial was one week amphotericin B, deoxycholate and flucytosine, shown there in the green uh, mortality curve. And in fact, that was uh, uh, superior in, in, in survival uh, terms to two weeks uh, amphotericin B and flucytosine. Um, equal rate of clearance of infection, but much better tolerated. In addition, the ACTA trial showed that an oral combination of high-dose fluconazole, 1,200 milligrams a day, and, uh, and uh, uh, flucytosine, given for 14 days, was a highly effective treatment. And that, that result was in the blue, 
the blue uh, uh, curve on the graph. So shortly after publication of the active trial results, the WHO revised their treatment guidelines to recommend the one-week amphotericin B deoxycholate and flucidazine induction regimen as the preferred regimen. And incidentally, in that regimen, in the second week, then high-dose fluconazole at 1,200 milligrams a day is given. Uh, with the oral combination regimen of fluconazole and flucidazine as a second-line regimen if no amphotericin B uh, w it was available. But now, in addition, we have the results of the AMBITION trial, and this was published just uh, uh, last year in 2022. 20, uh, and this trial looked at a regimen based on a single high dose of liposomal amphotericin uh, B or ambisome, uh, 10 milligrams per kilogram, given on day one, backed up by this optimal oral backbone of high dose fluconazole and flucidazine for 14 days. And this was tested against the new standard from the WHO guideline, the new updated standard of one week amphotericin B deoxycholate and flucytosine. And as you can see, uh, uh, in fact, the mortality was slightly less with the ambisome regimen, such that uh, in this trial we easily met our non-inferiority uh, uh, criteria. So what we saw in the trial was the same rate of clearance of infection with the single dose ambisome uh, regimen with fewer adverse events, less anemia, less renal impairment, less thrombophlebitis. So an even more practical, safer treatment for HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis across sites in sub-Saharan Africa. So following, uh, following the ambition uh, trial, WHO revised again the guideline and the new preferred regimen was the single high-dose ambisome regimen from the uh, ambition trial. But importantly, we have the backup regimens. If there's no uh, ambisome available, then the one-week amphotericin B deoxycholate and flucytosine regimen can give almost equal mortality benefit compared to the older regimens if it's given safely and monitored carefully. And then if there's no amphotericin B uh, formulation at all available, then the oral combination treatment with fluconazole and flucytosine, remember this almost halves the mortality compared to the prior very widely used treatment in low and middle income country settings of fluconazole uh, monotherapy. So in terms of implementing these, uh, these antifungal regimens, I just want to emphasize that access to flucytosine and ambisome is improving. And this is helped by a unit aid program uh, run through the NGO CHAI, the Clinton Health, and also by the very important fact that the Global Fund will now supply both flucytosine and ambisome uh, if countries uh, request these drugs through the Global Fund mechanism. And I'm happy to say that there are now two generic WHO pre-qualified uh, uh, formulate, uh, 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 manufacturers of generic uh, flucytosine, and since the ACTA trial, the, the cost of flucytosine has, has um, just about halved in, in those last years. And also, of course, Gilead have confirmed their commitment to preferential pricing for ambisome for the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis in high burden uh, countries. And, and just to say that in terms of the detail of giving these treatments and monitoring, uh, in particular, the new single-dose uh, ambisome regimen, then there are details given in the WHO guidelines and, and, and elsewhere. So what about uh, higher, higher resource settings? So far, the, those trials were carried out across sites in sub-Saharan Africa. What about uh, re re resource-rich settings? The standard of treatment in resource-rich settings has been, for some years now, two weeks of daily liposomal uh, amphotericin B, three to four milligrams per kilogram per day, with uh, flucytosine. Based on the earlier van der Horst trial and evidence that liposomal amphotericin B, or, although not more effective per se than amphotericin B deoxycholate, is certainly better tolerated. And, and that came from data from this study by Hamill and colleagues in clinical infectious diseases comparing liposomal amphotericin B to 
amphotericin B deoxycholate, the conclusion being that they were of roughly equal efficacy, although uh, of note, just to note, that the FDA analysis of that same trial data led them only to support the, the equivalence of the 6 milligram per kilogram dose. But remember, the, this treatment of the daily liposomal amphotericin B is given with flucytosine, and we have many years' experience of giving this combination in higher resource settings with very good, very good outcome. Uh, nevertheless, I think it's true to say that in new guidelines for resource-rich settings, then the single high-dose ambisome regimen will probably be included as a treatment option. But uh, this is a, uh, the, the, um, the applicability of this regimen to high resource settings and the caveats associated with its use in high resource settings. We, we, if you're, if, if uh, viewers are interested, we have discussed that in an opinion piece, uh, some, some of us as investigators on the ambition trial, and I've shown you the reference there at the bottom of this, at the bottom of this slide. So um, what about non-HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis? And I've taken these guidelines from the IDSA guidelines uh, published back in 2010, and also importantly from an updated ECMM cryptococcal guideline that will be coming out later this year. And for transplant-related cryptococcal meningitis, then the recommendation is daily liposomal amphotericin B, 3 to 4 milligram per kilogram per day, plus flucytosine for a minimum of two weeks for the induction and up to four weeks uh, induction phase. And for non-HIV, non-transplant, including the apparently immunocompetent patients who present with cryptococcal meningitis, again, daily liposomal amphotericin B with uh, flucytosine for a minimum of two weeks, with consideration for giving quite a lot longer treatment, four to six weeks, in the case of Cryptococcus gatii infection in non-HIV associated cryptococcal meningitis. What about the, the next phases, the consolidation and maintenance? Well, consolidation treatment is with high dose fluconazole, 400 to 800 milligrams a day, just to say that across lower and middle income country settings, it, for HIV associated cryptococcal meningitis, we do prefer the 800 milligrams a day uh, dose uh, we have enormous experience of it, and it appears to be uh, very safe. Just the only thing to remember with any form of high-dose fluconazole therapy is that this drug does slightly increase the QT interval, so you've got to be careful with any other concomitant medicines that increase QT interval and avoid those if at all possible. For maintenance, as I've mentioned uh, before, then this is low-dose fluconazole, just 200 uh, milligrams a day for, uh, for a minimum of one year in HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis and until immune reconstitution has occurred. So until, that is, until CD4 counts have, are above 100 and the viral load is undetectable for, for at least uh, three months. But this is highly effective uh, maintenance treatment and, um, uh, and uh, really I think the emphasis on making sure the patients don't run out of fluconazole and making sure they understand the importance of continuing to take the fluconazole maintenance. So really, we very rarely need these other azoles as alternative maintenance uh, therapies. So I just want to talk about, as I, I mentioned at the beginning, the, the optimal timing of antiretroviral therapy in the context of HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis. The fact is, if we give the antiretroviral therapy too early, then there's an increased risk of immune reconstitution reactions and an increased mortality. And this data comes from the important COAT study uh, led by David Bulwer and David Mayer. And the graph is shown there, the survival curves, showing improved survival if the antiretroviral therapy is deferred until four to six weeks after starting antifungal therapy. Uh, a lower mortality than if the, the ART is given earlier uh, that's uh, during the second week of antifungal uh, therapy. There's just one uh, uh, exception to this in the case of unmasking cryptococcal iris. This is when patients first present with cryptococcal meningitis after starting antiretroviral therapy. Then we usually continue, we usually continue the antiretroviral therapy. But even in this case, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a 
there's a slight doubt in the patients who have very recently started antiretroviral therapy. If they've started antiretroviral therapy within the last 14 days and then present with cryptococcal meningitis, there is some data to suggest that it may be better to hold the antiretroviral therapy and like in the other patients, um, restart at four to six weeks. Clearly, in patients who have previously had antiretroviral therapy but who have stopped taking the drug, they've, they've um, uh, uh, defaulted from care or they're failing, there's evidence that they're failing antiretroviral therapy due to resistance, then clearly those patients need uh, any restart of antiretroviral therapy or switch to second line therapy needs to be deferred until four to six weeks after starting the antifungal therapy. So now turning to other forms of cryptococcal infection, pulmonary cryptococcosis uh, infection at other sites. If, if there's mild pulmonary disease, so um, there's no evidence of cryptococcal meningitis, that's been ruled out with a lumbar puncture, no fungemia, no immunosuppression, then these patients can be treated with, these patients can be treated with fluconazole for, for six to 12 months. But uh, important to emphasize, if there's any severity to the disease or any hint of concomitant central nervous system involvement, then you have to treat as for central nervous system disease. Just one particular scenario to mention, this is the case of a solitary pulmonary nodule with cryptococcal infection, uh, which has been completely excised. This sometimes occurs in immunocompetent patients. Often uh, malignancy may be suspected or may not be able to be ruled out, but uh, after excision it turns out to be cryptococcal infection. There's no evidence of any infection elsewhere. Uh, there's no immunosuppression. Then in this, in this particular scenario, some experts uh, suggest you can hold or stop the antifungal therapy and just observe, observe these patients. So I want to just uh, end up by uh, summarizing, just in, in summary, amphotericin B-based induction uh, treatment kills cryptococcus faster and improves outcomes from patients with cryptococcal meningitis compared with the previous widespread Wide, wide, widespreadly used across low and middle income country settings, the previous uh, treatment of fluconazole monotherapy. And a single high dose uh, uh, ambisome uh, regimen given uh, uh, on day one with 14 days of, of, of flucytosine and fluconazole is the new preferred regimen for HIV associated cryptococcal meningitis across low and middle income country settings. Flucytosine is a key partner drug improving survival in all the recommended regimens and is available as an affordable generic or through the global fund. Fluid and saline loading during amphotericin B treatment is vital, monitoring infusion sites and for anemia and renal function and um, giving preemptive potassium and magnesium are all vital um, uh, uh, points uh, to reduce the toxicity, particularly, of course, of amphotericin B uh, deoxycholate. With the single high-dose ambisome regimen, we still give the fluid loading on day one with the high-dose ambisome, and we still give potassium and magnesium supplements just for the first three days. But the continued monitoring is really, obviously, particularly important with longer courses of amphotericin B deoxycholate. We need to defer the initiation or reinitiation of uh, or any switch in antiretroviral therapy after cryptococcal meningitis until four to six weeks of antifungal therapy. And lastly, fluconazole uh, is highly effective, low dose fluconazole, highly effective as a maintenance treatment to, to prevent uh, disease relapse. So thank you for watching, uh, uh, and I will uh, finish there.